If you're taking on the role of being a director, you've signed up for a big task. Making sure companies pay for performance is the biggest issue facing compensation committees. Corporate Board Member presents the Board Governance Series with series contributors PricewaterhouseCoopers and Meridian Compensation Partners. On this edition of the Board Governance Series, debating mandatory audit firm rotation with Cindy Fornelli, Executive Director, Center for Audit Quality. Hi, I'm Laura Finn, Web Editor of BoardMember.com. And today I'm speaking with Cindy Fornelli, the Executive Director at the Center for Audit Quality. Cindy, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thanks for having me, Laura. It's my pleasure. You're here today to talk about mandatory audit firm rotation, and that is a really hot topic right now. You couldn't be more accurate. It is a very hot topic. The public company Accounting Oversight Board, uh, which is a mouthful, but also known as the PCAOB, in the fall put out a concept release asking the question as to how to enhance auditor independence, objectivity, and skepticism. And one of the primary focuses of their concept release was this notion of whether or not mandatory audit firm rotation would help enhance independence, objectivity, and skepticism. And the board members that you've come across, how do they feel about mandatory audit firm rotation? Well, we have quite the record that was built by the board member community. The PCOB, as I mentioned, put out for comment this concept release, and the comment period closed at the end of December. So as of that time, they had received over 600 comment letters from interested parties, and squarely a third of those letters, over 200, came from the board community, largely from individuals writing through their audit committees. And they were unanimously opposed to mandatory audit firm rotation, which is quite extraordinary to have 200 people, more than 200 people, agree to anything. Yeah, absolutely. And why do you think that is, Cindy? The primary reason that was cited by the board member community, and frankly from most of the comment letters, most of the commenters, of this over 600, over 90 percent opposed mandatory firm rotation. So it wasn't just the board community. But board members in particular cited the fact that it would take away from the boardroom, from the audit committee, and remember that with respect to public company auditing, the audit committee has to be independent. It takes away from them their responsibility and, frankly, fiduciary obligation under Sarbanes-Oxley to oversee the audit process. So that is their responsibility under corporate governance and under the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. And by taking away a choice and mandating that every set period of time they have to change auditors, they felt interfered with and usurped their statutory obligations. And how do institutional investors feel about mandatory audit firm rotation? Well, interestingly, we heard from very few investors in general on this topic. And investors very often are focused on accounting and auditing issues and are frequent responders to PCAOB requests for either a concept release or a standard uh, because they the, the direct beneficiaries of okay. auditing the, the audit process. But in this case, very, very few wrote in, and those that did were about split. Some were in favor and some were opposed, citing many of the same reasons that board members cited, and that is the lack of, uh, or taking that away from, that responsibility away from the audit committee and putting it in a regulatory function. Many of them did not like that, those that responded. If mandatory audit firm rotation is not the answer, then how can better independence and objectivity be achieved? Well, and you're right, that's a very good question because independence, objectivity, and skepticism are cornerstones of audit quality. They're important factors. And so we should all be thinking about how we can ever increase diligence in those three areas. So we at the Center for Audit Quality have spent a lot of time thinking about that, as has the board community been thinking about that. 
So, for instance, things that the profession can do, the public company auditing profession can do, is making sure that they have very robust conversations with audit committees, making sure that they discuss with audit committees various difficult accounting and complex accounting issues that arise, significant transactions that arise, critical accounting estimates. They need to have that conversation with the board of directors and the audit committee on a regular basis. Firms also, the auditors also need to discuss with the audit committee any inspection findings that the PCAOB has come up with. And so that would be an important communication and making sure that there's vigilance around that. Audit committees, again, need to make sure that they have that conversation with the auditor and that they understand uh, where these critical pressure points are in the audit. They also need to make sure, as a best practice, that they're going through a periodic assessment of the performance of the auditor. How is the auditor doing on an, and we think they should do that on an annual basis. Um, we're really excited that we're working with a whole host of audit committee and board communities um, to look at ways that we can partner together to make sure that audit committees have the tools that they need to do a proper assessment. And I'm very excited that corporate board member is one of those groups that we are working with um, to make sure that audit committees have the tools that they need. Now as far as the PCAOB timeline goes on this, what what is the timeline and what can boards do to further engage in the debate? Well, there are a couple of things. The PCOB under Chairman Doty has announced recently that this is a topic that the board will be looking at, that the PCOB board will be looking at for the next year or so. So we have a long time horizon. So it is important that board members and audit committee members become engaged. The PCOB has reopened the comment period through April 22nd of 2012. So they're right now in an active comment period and um, board members and audit committee members and really any interested party, uh, I would encourage to go to the PCOB's website, which is PCOB.org, and look for docket number 37. If you don't remember docket number 37, you can still find it fairly easily. But comment, read about the issue, look at all the other comment letters, well maybe not all of the other comment letters because there are over 600, but read some of the other comment letters, uh, read the PCAOB's concept release, and then weigh in. It need not be a long response, um, but let the PCAOB know uh, what uh, board members think. I think that's really important that they hear that from that community. The PCOB is also going on and having a series of roundtable discussions across the country uh, throughout the course of the year. And so those will be broadcast, uh, so you can get to those on the PCOB's website. Um, and certainly there will be summaries of those um, roundtables that occur throughout the country over the course of the year. And so board members and audit committees can also look for that to inform themselves. That's great. And we'll also put your email address up on the screen so that any of our viewers who have questions for you about the topic can reach you, too. That's great. And I would, you know, if you're interested, point to the CAQ's comment letter on this topic. It's also on our website. Great. Thank you so much for coming today, Cindy. I really appreciate your time. Well, thank you, Laura. It's been a pleasure. And thank you so much for watching this edition of the Board Governance Series. Cindy Fornelli can be reached at cfornelli at thecaq dot org. The Board Governance Series is a presentation of Corporate Board Member, an NYSE Euronext company.